yeah, coach, forgot to check up on uh, Hennessy. Uh, yeah, he's progressing, so we'll have to see how the week goes. Um, you know, we still got time to make a decision, but uh, make a progress. So we'll see how this week goes. Do you anticipate elevating, or not elevating, but activating anybody else at this point? Or to well, yeah, so, yeah, so John Fitzpatrick, we expect him, we'll bring him back to practice and uh, see where he's at. Yeah, starting day. Today will be a little bit different schedule, obviously, with the short week. Um, just the way you, you plan out practice. Uh, it's a in season Wednesday, but you know, obviously the time constraints are different having just played Sunday. So we'll we'll adjust like everybody else is to play on Saturday, and then uh, you know we got to be prepared to to go out. It's it's going to be cold in Baltimore. Um, thankfully, I think it'll be cold here in Atlanta in the next couple of days, so we'll get some work outside and be ready to roll. Yesterday, you guys yeah, be monitoring it. How yeah. Do you yeah, you got to. I mean, it's a, you, you have to. It's um, with anybody. I mean, that puts things back in perspective about uh, health, life. Uh, he's doing better. Uh, he's here. He's working. So just make sure he's doing all right. And we continue to follow up. Did, did he suffer a concussion? Or? I don't know the official. You know, it's different than when you're dealing with players. Uh, so, you know, it, I try not to, uh, you know, obviously things that are concerned with um, and then things that, you know, I'm not diving into somebody's personal medical records there, Michael, but uh, knowing what I need to know and, and doing what's best for Dean. Well, I guess I just asked that because you were there. It's about a question. I understand what you asked. Well, you were also there in 18 when he had. That was a, that was a completely I, different thing. Completely yeah. different thing. Yeah, Coach, what are some of the uh, issues you see with the Ravens' defense as you all are getting prepared for them? Yeah, so that's a defense, uh, you know, schematically we're familiar with. Obviously, Dean was there. There's a lot of guys that have, that have been there, players and coaches. They've had a long history, let's call it the last 20-something years, of a standard on defense. And they've had some great players, and it's a really good scheme. Like everybody, when you, you work together, People have success. A lot of people get hired off it, and they have their, you know, they tweak their own things. But schematically, structure-wise, it's something we're we're familiar with. Now the players are really different. How somebody calls it, you know, the game plan adjustments, or maybe they tweak a coverage here or there. Uh, there's different, but it's, um, like I said, they've had a long history, especially since Harbaugh's been there. Uh, they play a certain way, and this will be a great test for us. Going on the road against a really good football team, and a team that. Values a lot of the same things we do. It'll be a physical game, and we're looking forward to the challenge. How is uh, the rookie playing? Uh, Kyle Hamilton played with Fitzpatrick. Right, yeah, he played at Harris. Mm -hmm. yeah, played at Notre Dame with Ade. Um, so he, he, you know, they're using him very similar to what you saw on tape at Notre Dame. Uh, a lot of, a lot of that big uh, slot corner spot. Uh, you know, they pressure him. You know, they play him deep. I mean, it's all the things you saw at Notre Dame. Uh, they're using him on teams and. You know, you, you certainly notice him out there. He's a he's got a lot of length and, and range. So, um, you know, watching you know, especially recently, but he, he's making an impact. I know you talked a bit about Tyler yesterday, but with the, his running style, is that in some ways maybe the preferred running style that that you'd like to have in your offense? Uh, you know, I don't sit there and if somebody's a good football player. There's certain things you value, but in terms of, you know, I know much was made about the size or something like that. If a guy's a good football player and we can get him here, it's my job to, to try to use him the best way possible. And there's certain values, and it's not just size or prototype there. Uh, like I said, there's, you know, the success that we've had in the run game with, with him and Patterson and Huntley, they're, they're all different players. They, they, they both have, all three of them have a aggressive mindset, but they're, they have their strengths, and we try to play into those. So uh, we're happy we have Tyler. There's a lot of things he does that we value. I think for a rookie, uh, something that, you know we noticed going through that I think is the hardest learning curve for him is the protection element, and he does a nice job with that as well. In terms of how he runs, though, I guess stylistically, if you go back and look at you know what, but you had in Tennessee, and I'm not being in comparison there, but it just seems like that may be the type of fact, like the guy who will be able to break tackles and versus more of a... Yeah, we value that. But uh, again, if a guy's a speed guy and doesn't, and he can move the football and, and score and can help us, you know, we'll, we'll take him. I mean, that's 
I, I do value the way he finishes runs. Um, certainly, you can see as the game goes on, I mean, there, his presence is felt. Um, I've always thought the great ones. I mean, you know, that's why I don't go comparison. Like, this guy reminds me of this. But the production, what I remember, you know, early in my coaching career, you know, breaking out a lot of the old Eagles tapes, when the Eagles had Westbrook, they're completely different runners. So I'm not comparing them. But the thing I thought the efficiency of him running the football where you thought it was going to be a one-yard game and you look up and it's second and five, uh, those guys are valuable. And, and they do it a completely different way. And the way Tyler does it, I mean, you, you guys have seen it firsthand. And uh, he's improved a lot. And uh, like I said, we're, Michael, we're, we're happy he's here. When it comes to Tyler, I mean, obviously y'all knew with his college tape and the yards after contact that and the physicality of which he runs with, but were you at all surprised that you were able to see that translate so soon and that there really wasn't a lot of hesitancy in, in him not shying away from that contact? That's kind of his body of work. It's who he was. Um, certainly you don't know how they'll, you know, you're, a lot of it is educating guesses, and there's some things that you can control and you can't, uh, you know, until you you work with a player, but uh, I wouldn't say it surprised me. Uh, we we had a pretty good idea of who he was, what he was made of, and uh, we're happy that it has translated uh, quicker than maybe we anticipated. You spoke yesterday about the advantages of the distribution of carries helping to keep uh, running backs fresh later in the season. Do you have has he shown the indication though that if called upon to take a heavier load, that yes. he can also uh, stay strong through a game? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you know, like I said, in a perfect world, I mean, it's been kind of a unique year, just the way that we're constructed and, um, you know, what we feel our strengths are right now. Uh, it is nice to, you know, where he hasn't taken 300 carries so far, neither has CP. I think that helps you, uh, assuming that we can continue to be productive in that in that area. Not to say, I mean, like you said, you've, we've seen guys that can do it, uh, but I do like the fact that we have multiple multiple players there. Offensive line, they're obviously playing a huge part in this as well. But to kind of see the consistency that this group has had over the course of this season, to be able to run block the way that they have, even with these loaded boxes, I mean, what went into that? I know I've asked you that before, and you were kind of talking about how it was just like the rep, rep the reputation, reputation, no, Repu repetition. Repu yes, that's it. <laughs> Repping of the same thing over and over again, yeah. and it's not as like a big deal as normal, but like. What does it mean for these guys to consistently do that week in and week out? Yeah, that's what you want to see. I mean, we've been challenged. We've seen some of the better defensive fronts. We'll have a huge challenge this weekend in Baltimore. Baltimore is right at the top in almost every category and run defense. Um, so that that's, you know, most weeks. I mean, you're playing good players, good on good every week. But we have played some of the better on paper run units, uh, especially on the defensive lines. So those guys continue to work. I love the way they operate, and it does. It takes everybody, and, and you know, a lot of times when you look at those numbers, a against a loaded box or whatever, you know, it, there's a lot of subjectivity that's in there, and they may not know, like, hey, pre-snap, what it is, and you know, even from New Orleans where they're trying to show down one way in rotation, and you got to decipher what's BS and whatnot, and how you you put it together. You know, a guy may be there, they may count him in there, and that's really not what he's doing. That's not really his run support. He may bail out. They may be using the corner for for it. There may be a pressure coming the other way. So those are a lot of things too, and that's those are the games within the games. You get there, and the way we we try to run the football, we try to have answers. That's why the quarterback's such a big part of it. Um, and we have quarterbacks that can that can certainly help in the run game, whether they we do it with zone read or some other design runs. Um, even though stuff on the actions, when they pull the ball, that is a part of the option, and that helps to eliminate it. You may get you know eight guys in there in theory, but when you get on the perimeter. You know, the advantage goes back to you, and, and that, that is something we're also excited about with Desmond. You saw a little bit of that on, on Sunday. So there's a lot of things that go into it. I think our tight ends are doing a heck of a job, too. If you want to run the, the ball the way we do, you're going to need those guys in there. You're going to need the receivers to help. You look at the big run Algier had uh, between Zacchaeus, Hesse, and, and Drake, they really made that thing go. And then obviously Tyler broke that first tackle, but that was a huge play in the game. But those, those guys make a commitment to it. So it is, it is all 11. It's not just me sitting up here giving me some uh, corny coaching cliche. It's uh, what we believe in, and there's a lot of things that we do and uh, week in and week out. And our staff and those players have done a hell of a job. How does Baltimore's offense change 
can open up when they have Lamar Jackson <clears throat> versus QB Huntley? And then kind of how do you prepare for both this week? Yeah, I mean, so we've seen Huntley um, for a couple games. We, you know, Lamar, uh, those guys schematically, and they, you know, they're different players, but both of them, they, they can certainly stem plays and we've all seen the highlights when Lamar keeps it. So they, they, they make you defend everything in the run game. They're, they're a heavy gap scheme team. That's kind of how they've evolved. That's kind of fits their personnel, uh, personnel, the way they use their tight ends, their, their fullback uh, card, and you know that line. They're, they're big, heavy guys. They're trying to get you in the, the double teams. You see a lot of pullers. They use a pre-snap motion, but you're, it's different style, and it's been very successful. That's what makes this league fun. It's not everybody's not doing the same thing, but they're also going to make you account for the quarterback in it. So you've got to be really sound in your run fits, because when you're wrong, they've hit those explosive runs. And certainly Lamar has done it better than you know, anybody at that spot in the last couple of years. And so you prepare for them, just like every week. Um, we'll, we'll be, you know, prepare the best we can for Lamar. And Huntley's a good player too. If he plays, he plays, but that's how we go about it. Speaking of your run defense, what did you see from uh, Troy Anderson in his start on uh, Sunday? And, and what has he shown you that, that, uh, that gave him the bigger role in that? Yeah, he just shot, tried to play the strengths. He's made a lot of progress as the season's gone on. Uh, he's getting more comfortable. He's a, he's a smart, I mean, instinctive player. He's a he's heavy-handed guy. So um, between him and Rashawn, Rashawn's you know done a nice job too in the in the run game. And uh, you know we got hurt on a couple you know things they they hit us on on the perimeter. But we weren't sound, you know. But those guys are grinding up front. You know, Abdullah Horn. They continue to get better every week. Uh, fundamentally, we know it'll be the same thing this week. Uh, the way that Baltimore plays. When it comes to Desmond Ritter, how do you I don't know, not overwhelm a rookie with like all the things he needs to fix going into the next game? Is there a couple things you really focus on, or is it the NFL and you do give him everything he needs to fix? No, I mean, like there's a different challenge this week than it was in New Orleans. Uh, both good defenses, uh, but different challenges. Uh, and certainly, you know, everybody's going to look at the. And that's the thing. That's a challenge. Can we get? Can we get our passing game? Uh, you talk about balanced. Uh, you know, Mike, you've asked me about it a few times. It is true. We need to get the scoring up. We need to get more balance. Uh, same the game. We got to get over this uh, where we've been the last couple of weeks uh, and get over the hump and get back in the winning column. So, you know, we don't need to ask him all of a sudden to reinvent himself overnight about making progress, understanding that the obstacles that we'll face Saturday in Baltimore, certainly things that mistakes he made to improve on so you're not seeing the same mistakes. And, uh, so there'll be different challenges, but we'll continue to push this and and, and work to get progress there and get more uh, productivity out of that yeah. that part of our offense. Yeah, we just had a game with him before we practice, and you kind of see the aftermath of it. I guess it makes sense. What did you learn about him, maybe that you that you couldn't have known? Before? Sure. So you go through it, right? And then that's the thing about perspective. Like I tell him all the time. I told him Saturday. We talked about it, and I told him, you know. Last week he was the most popular guy in Atlanta. Now he's played. You know that's always the case, right? An old coach told me that one time. There's nobody more popular than your backup quarterback and, until he has to play. And so, hell true. Those old guys, uh, D. Led, they knew something or two about about this game. A lot of the old wisdom pops in my head sometimes. I'll share and some of that I probably can't share, but um, you, you know how that goes. But it's perspective. He's not the first young quarterback. You could pull up all these guys that have. Gone on to Hall of Fame careers, and they hadn't, didn't light the world on fire early on. And as they got in there, we can all help them. It is a team game, and that's, that is a, a big, big job. Uh, I thought he handled Mike. A lot of the stuff we asked him to do in the huddle, there was you talking about going through it with him the first time. You know, we we talked about jumping in the deep end, not throwing in the deep end, right, D-Led? So, um, and I thought he handled that well because there, when you're going through the in between series, can he self-correct? Is the moment too big for him? Um, numbers are what they are, right? And the result is, what, I mean, that's what happened. But I think it said a lot about Desmond, his mindset, his poise. In the most stressful environment you could put somebody in other than being in a playoff game with the ball in your hand to go win it on the road, you get in fourth and five, and he delivered. And I didn't see any panic from him, uh, even when he made mistakes. He didn't sit there and whine and look to blame somebody. He understood it. Hell, half the time he understood. You know, at least he had a reason why and said, hey, I can't do that. Yeah, you're right. So those are the things, Michael, that, that give me a lot of uh, you know, hope 
uh, with him and that he wouldn't have known until you'd gone through a real game. When you follow that up, does that mean you keep the package for him the same or do you add a little bit since he's got a little bit of game experience? Well, there's nothing we tried to hold back from him. And there's certain things that you, you realize the other team has a say in when we're trying to attack, you know, that'll change week in and week out. There's certain things that we've got our staples that we try to accomplish and they're trying to take them away. And we're trying to, you know, they have their strengths and we're trying to attack their weaknesses or, uh, you know, go out for certain matchups. So those, those will change every week. Um, like I said, you've got to be, we got to play in the Desmond strengths too. So those are things you tweak and it's a, a completely different scheme that we're playing. It's another good, good defense You're on the road uh, without going into too many specifics about how we're going to scheme that up. But that, that, that is a challenge too. Like what can we improve on? What can he handle? What's he really good at? There's a lot of things guys that look good out of here in practice. Uh, but when there's consequences, if you hold the ball too long, it seems to change things for some guys. And so those are where you, you know, you're kind of working through. But uh, I'm encouraged, and I think we'll see some progress Saturday. Do you consider this a must-win game when it comes to winning the division in the playoffs? And the you know, of it? the reality is, I mean, they're all must-wins. But uh, our focus is this challenge. I mean, you know, I mean, we were in the same spot last week where – you can get in all the bizarre scenarios around us, but most importantly, we gotta we gotta find a way to win, and that's all we're concerned about is Baltimore and the challenge, not letting the other things distract us. You know, these are always a great test at the end of the year, especially this week. You're playing on a short week, everybody's in the middle of the holiday season, um, all the other things that can that can creep in. It's our job as professionals uh, to be really you know focused at the task at hand and, and see if we can improve and go get a win again. Yeah, Coach, is uh, Troy, you, you, are you all ready to start him the rest of the way? I think I saw him move to one on the depth chart. Well, uh, uh, that's Bassey's depth chart. Um, <laughs> we play in so many packages, you know, D-Led. It, it is, I mean, I, and I'm not making light of it. It's just where we're at offensively and defensively. And, and, and you have to put that. I mean, I, I respect it, but there have been games. It's not just because the depth chart is this way. I may start the game with something if I think it's our best play. So does that mean so-and-so may start over? I don't know. That's why I don't get too involved in it. Uh, I know there's some players that have had these streaks. Certainly maybe at O-line, you know, they're going to be out there. Or there's certain players maybe that's it's been a bigger deal in the past. But we're so multiple that I feel like we've got a lot of guys that are starters. The same way I feel about that inside linebacker room between Rashawn, Troy, and Mike. That's our intent, Michael. And, yeah. and like you can go back to these loaded questions, and I can give you hypotheticals. Just like with anybody's health, we'll monitor that all week. So I'm not going to sit here and make you uh, some grand statement today. Let's monitor how the week goes. We had plans just like we had contingency plans that we had carried over when we got here. That's one thing I talked about. I don't remember when, but that COVID you know, really forced you to do. You had to have backup plans, and that was our backup plan with Frank. Now, to, to Frank's I mean, most times you would have at least had a day to prepare or maybe a week. Frank had 20 minutes. The staff did a good job, rallied, and we settled down, and uh, that's just the way it goes. And so we'll monitor the whole week, but I, I can't give you that answer right now. So I'm going to make sure we're doing the best interest of Dean's health and, the, and then the, what's the best interest of his team. And that, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. So from what you've seen on film, what kind of difference do you think Roquan Smith has been to the Ravens defense since he showed up? Well, anytime you had a really good player, I mean, you could you could feel him uh, when you're just watching the film. He, he is. I know he's a Georgia guy, um, been very productive. He was productive in Chicago. Uh, you see it as soon as he got into Baltimore. He's an instinctive player. You see him all over the tape. You see 18, and he's at the point of attack, and he's making plays. And so they've added a good football player, and he's made an impact. Thank you.